What's up guys, Gearbox hasn't released new paddles since their original CX line, which came out in November of 2021. In that time, Gearbox fans have been patiently awaiting new models to fix some of the issues with the original CX-14s, specifically their lack of power. And if you're a fan of Gearbox, you'll be happy to know that the new models are much improved. My playtesting of this paddle focused heavily on the CX-14H, so in less specifying otherwise, that's what I'm referring to. For the specs, we have a price of $250, 14 millimeter thickness, 8.5 ounce weight, standard and elongated shapes, 5.6 inch handle, and two grip circumference options of 3.6 inches and 3.9 inches, carbon fiber face, and Gearbox's patented SST core. One of the biggest changes to the CX-14 Ultimate is the new swing weights. If you watched my CX-11 review, you might remember that I said the reason Gearbox paddles lack power is that their swing weights were just too low. Well, Gearbox must have agreed because the new models have gone up quite a bit in swing weight. The original CX-14s had swing weights of 91 for the H model and 101 for the elongated model. The new swing weights are 109 for the H model and 119 for the E model. Both have increased by nearly 20 points on the swing weight scale, which is a substantial substantial change. For reference, most people notice a swing weight change after it increases or decreases by 10 points. Going up nearly 20 is going to feel very drastic if you're used to those original CX-14s. Now, with that being said, the old CX-14s were very low on the swing weight scale. The H model was one of the lowest swing weights I've ever tested, and the E model was very low for an elongated paddle. It actually might be the lowest I've ever tested for an elongated paddle. These new numbers for the Ultimate align with what regular elongated and standard shaped paddles are on the market. So while it's a substantial change from the original paddles, it's more similar to what other paddles are on the market now. So long story short, the increase in swing weight is a good thing for those seeking more power, but it will come at the expense of some hand speed from the original CX-14. A few other small notes I want to talk about quick. I really enjoy Gearbox's subtle designs. The paddles look great and have these subtle color flares to make the paddles stand out in a sea of raw carbon fiber paddles that all look nearly identical. So whoever did the designs at Gearbox, Great job. Now, number two, if you haven't used a gearbox paddle and are considering one, be aware of the knob at the end of the handle. Most paddles have this bottom part of the handle protruding a little bit, but I just don't love how gearbox does theirs. It protrudes pretty aggressively, which makes me want to hold my hand higher up on the handle and not wrap my hand around the bottom, which gives me less area to put two hands on the handle for a backhand. It makes it feel like I have a 5.3 inch handle instead of 5.6 as advertised. Now, whether this knob bothers you is going to be personal preference or not, but for me, I didn't personally love it and found that it made the handle just feel smaller when putting two hands on it. Middle to late last year, Gearbox silently added a new texture to their CX-14s to increase the spin. While Gearbox paddles get fantastic spin without additional texture, it became apparent to many players that on slices, roll volleys, and dinks, the paddle struggled to generate the same spin as raw carbon fiber. My belief, along with many others, is that the Hyperbyte technology from Gearbox works best when striking the ball hard, which lets the ball sink into the carbon fiber tubes of the face. But when you aren't striking the ball hard on shots like dinks, then that's where the new texture comes in and helps. And this texture has helped the spin a lot. The CX-14H power tested at 1850 RPM and the CX-14E was 1861 RPM. These numbers compete with the best of the best paddles on the market right now, which is great to see. My only concern is that this texture is going to wear off. It appears to be similar to the texture of the Selkirk Vanguard Power Air, which has seen mixed results amongst players. My 003 has gone quite some time without degradation in performance, but many people online have reported that they feel significant drop-offs on the power air. Some Gearbox users reported last year that the coating wore off after a month or two and became like the original CX-14s without grit. And unfortunately, this is just where we are with paddles right now. If you're a competitive player, those textures aren't going to last you forever. The bright side is that you should still get very acceptable spin because of the SST core when that face inevitably wears off. It just might not be as good for certain shots like dinks and roll volleys and so on. 
All right, let's talk about the highlight of this paddle, the power. I can confidently say that Gearbox has increased the power of these paddles noticeably. The original CX-14 felt like it had almost no plow through on the ball. If you didn't nail it square in the center, the ball resisted the paddle more than others on the market. And even when you would nail the sweet spot, the ball wasn't coming with that much pace. Similarly for resets, balls off center didn't have any pace to get back over the net, which meant you really needed to use a lot of your body to get those back over the net, or you just had to hit the sweet spot all the time, which most people aren't doing. On the ultimate models, the pop feels great and the paddle feels much more penetrating. I would not put it in the same category as the Pro Kenix Black Ace, Legacy Pro, or Selkirk Labs Project 002, but I think you have access to adequate power. Where you truly unlock the power of this paddle is once you give it some lead. I added about 0.6 ounces of lead to my CX-14H. I placed it on the bottom two corners and one small strip at the head of the paddle. My primary reason for trying this was that I tried an original CX-14 with this lead setup and thought it actually played pretty well, so I just mimicked it for the ultimate. The weight went up to 9.1 ounces and the swing weight to 117. It does feel noticeably more sluggish in my hand, but not enough for me to prefer it without the lead. I think the lead really brings out the performance characteristics of the paddle, so to make it play better, I would rather use the lead than not use it. The lead added some stability and more plow through, giving the paddle even more power. I did do the same setup to the CX-14E and the swing weight went up to 127, which felt noticeably more sluggish. It was playable just like the original Ben John's Hyperion 16 millimeter was, but I could tell my hands were slower at the net. The power increase from the lead tape was enough that I could use it for singles comfortably. It wouldn't be my first pick, but I've played a few games and didn't think the paddle was holding me back at all. With the high RPMs and more power, passing shots are easy to fire off. So this is a welcomed upgrade because the original CX-14 was far too soft for singles in my opinion. Despite having a nice power upgrade, I never found myself struggling to control the paddle. On third shot drops, I could softly brush up the ball and drop it very well. If I struggled anywhere, it was mid-court resets. Not because it lacked control, but primarily due to the sweet spot. Hitting off-center results in a very weak ball compared to nicer polymer paddles. With the previous CX-14, it leaned so far towards control that I had to put way more effort into basic shots like dinks and resets, and the additional power of this paddle has brought it much closer to an all-court paddle, and I don't feel like I have to use as much of my body to get shots to go over. And because the paddle is more of an all-arounder now, that's kind of why I think I didn't struggle with it. It's much closer to paddles than I'm used to than other power paddles on the market. If you are hoping for a drastic change in the gearbox feel, you might be a little disappointed. It still has that classic gearbox feel, which some love and some hate. On the CX-11s, I didn't like how it felt, but with the CX-14H Ultimate, I don't mind it with the lead tape. It might not be my all-time favorite, but it was enjoyable enough. The ball pops off the face just a bit harder and has a slightly springier feel to it. The original CX-14 was always Gearbox's most similar feeling paddle to Polymer. While it still doesn't feel exactly like Polymer, the Ultimate with lead tape is the closest Gearbox has ever been to feeling more like Polymer. The area I'm disappointed Gearbox wasn't able to improve more was the sweet spot. One of my biggest gripes with Gearbox paddles is that they consistently have a below average sweet spot compared to good polymer paddles on the market. While it is improved noticeably on the CX-14 Ultimate, it's still not what I'm used to from high-end polymer. The paddle feels awesome when you nail the sweet spot, but if you're like most players, you probably aren't doing that all the time. The edges of the paddle have very little energy return and feel pretty unforgiving. This is one of the reasons I added lead tape. I needed something to make the edges feel a bit more alive and the lead helped achieve that. It's an improvement over the original CX-14, but that paddle's bar for sweet spot performance wasn't exactly high. I would say the performance of the CX-14 Ultimate is acceptable, but not above average. I can't give you an extensive report on the durability because I just haven't used the paddle for a long enough period of time. But if anyone has a good track record of durability in this sport, it's Gearbox. They're by far the best built paddles in all of Pickleball. The primary issue I think it's going to have is the grit on the face, which as mentioned previously, has seen mixed results. It's hard to fault Gearbox for this though, because almost every single paddle has this issue. 
if you apply some kind of texture to the face, it's going to wear out over time. Some just manage to last a little bit longer than others. Gearbox durability has always been a huge selling point for these paddles, and some people have used the same paddle for several years without losing performance. So if durability is top of mind for you, then look no further than Gearbox paddles. You know, I really haven't said this yet about a Gearbox paddle, but I actually did enjoy using the Ultimate. 90% of my play was on the CX-14H, because for whatever reason, I just struggle quite a bit to use the elongated gearbox paddles. I had the same experience with the CX-11 where I didn't care for the elongated, but the standard shape was much better. While I don't like the lack of reach, I think the sweet spot is better on the standard shape, and with an already iffy sweet spot, getting that increase is a priority for me. I wish that Gearbox could have done more to make this paddle have a better sweet spot like the good polymer paddles on the market, but this could just be a limitation of edgeless paddles. The 003 has a similar issue as well. If lead tape wasn't an option, I wouldn't use the 003. But once I add lead, the paddle transforms into something that I really enjoy using. So just be aware that if you want to get the full potential out of this paddle, like the previous CX-14s, you're probably still gonna have to add lead tape. My only concern with that is since these paddles already have a normal-ish swing weight for their shape, adding even more lead tape just to get the performance where it should be may make the paddle heavier than most people want to. I don't know that I've ever used a standard shaped paddle where I weighted it up to the point where the swing weight was 117. 117 is pretty high for a standard shaped paddle and 127 for the elongated one after lead tape is pretty heavy. I was fine using the Ben Johns Hyperion CFS at that swing weight because the performance of the paddle was so good that I was willing to sacrifice some hand speed. With the CX-14E, the performance isn't good enough for me to want to put up with that slower hand speed. So just be aware that if you like to add a lot of lead tape, you have less options on this paddle than you did before with the previous ones. But in some ways, you can kind of view it like they just built the lead tape into the paddle. My biggest question is why Gearbox raised the price to $250. In terms of technology, not that much has changed. So why increase the price to 250 just for some extra power? The three things that they market as changes on the website are the Hyperbyte 2.0, which has the added grit to the face, but that was a free upgrade last year on the original CX-14s. So we can take that out of the equation. Next, you have the power band technology, which they claim helps the face have more of a trampoline effect, which is giving you that power. And then they also upgraded the edgeless frame. They claim that this helps with durability and perimeter weighting, which helps with power and sweet spot. So the largest differences are the power band technology and upgraded edgeless frame. I just don't know that those specific upgrades warrant an extra $50 in price. Now, on the other hand, and to Gearbox's credit, this is what Carbon did with the new X series, and we all loved it. The paddles became more powerful and durable, and Carbon charged 50 more dollars. But with the X series, the jump in performance felt quite substantial, whereas the CX-14 Ultimate feels like it's what the original CX-14 should have been. The Ultimate hits harder, but it isn't as powerful as the Prokenix Black Ace, Legacy, or other thermoformed paddles. That might have been the reason it feels like a less substantial upgrade. It went from being very soft to more of an all-court paddle, whereas Carbon felt like an all-court paddle and went to a power paddle. In my opinion, it's hard to find reasons that this paddle should have been increased to $250, but that's just where we are with paddles these days. To Gearbox's credit though, they are one of the few brands that are innovative enough to warrant the price tag. A lot of companies on the market are doing the same thing that they have been doing and just increasing the price. One of the biggest examples of this is the Engage Pursuit line. Those started at $200 and now they're up to $220 and they didn't even change anything. At least with the Gearbox, they made upgrades to enhance the performance and durability of the product. Price aside, I think Gearbox fans are going to love this paddle and be very excited to play with it. If you weren't a Gearbox fan in the past, this paddle probably isn't going to make you a fan now. And if I were going to recommend a Gearbox paddle to try, it would definitely be the Ultimates. I think the CX-14 has a much better feel than the CX-11, and the extra power and larger sweet spot of the Ultimate makes it a much better playing experience than both of the previous models. Now, of course, these new paddles do come with the drawback of having a higher swing weight, which means slower hand speed and less lead tape customization, 
but I just think with the better performance out of the box, it's going to be worth it for most people. And if you're someone who hasn't tried a gearbox paddle, I just don't think the original CX-14 is the one to start with. So there you guys go. Those are my thoughts on the CX-14 Ultimate. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.